Okay, so now once you've created those height fields with QGIS, now we can actually model them in Rhino. So again, I'm going to do height fields, my command, go to where I've saved those files. In this case, because I've already done them, I am going to do the precipitation. So I'll start with 2006, hit open. And again, we'll just do a simple script to visualize some of this information. I'm going to do this because it's 36. I'm going to do it by 180, just because that's a decent number. And for my sample points, I actually don't want this to be really tight because it's going to make the space look very rigid. I'll go ahead and just do it for now just to see what it looks like. What's up? Nope, it can work as a surface. Mine happens to work as a surface. Why yours doesn't? I don't know. So, again, because it's starting to read like all those pixels, because there's so many points, you can see how tight that grid is, it makes it very rigid. This is, again, just some sequential information. It doesn't need to be 100% um, accurate. So. Let's do that again with the lower sample point. So, height field, 2006 again. Like, I want it to be overall fairly large, spatially, but I don't want it to be that detailed. So, again, I'll do 180. Instead, let's do a fraction of that. So, let's do, instead of 24, let's just do 48. And because it's... Again, this is a 24 by 36 sheet of paper. I'm just doubling those values. So this will be 48 by 72 height. Because again, with the precipitation one, I did it um, indicating where 6 inches of rain was and then where 12 inches of rain was. And then obviously anywhere between that. So height of 12 feet, that should be good. Um, I'll do set the image as a texture just so you can see what it does. So you can see that this one's a little bit more kind of gestural. Like it's very, uh, it's much smoother. It's not as mountainous. If you want to do that, that's fine. It's obviously just going to require more memory and processing. And for the purpose of this, because it's just going to be a small thumbnail diagram, the detail doesn't have to be perfect. So from this, we can again create um, some representation techniques. So I'll bring this into Grasshopper again. Let's go ahead and hide it in Grasshopper. We'll keep it in right now, shall we? Okay, so the next thing you do is you're going to divide the surface. So surface, divide. And again, we're just going to keep these as the same value as our actual Rhino image resolution. So in this case, again, uh, so we're going to have in the U direction, that's going to be 72. Or in other words, the X direction. And the Y, that's going to be 48. Those are grid of points. That way, it's the same as the other one. It might be a little bit off. That should be OK. And so, again, for precipitation, we're going to divide it between the z value of 6 and 0, and then from whatever, 6.01 and 12. For temperature, you'll bring this in at 100 feet, I guess. Or you could do some ratio of that, and then divide it by um, the 90 foot, or 90 degrees, and then 100 feet, or um, 100 degrees. 
in this case, again, it's just creating that vertical scale in relation to your data. So again, I'm going to flatten this data. And the first thing I'm going to do is look at where those points are that are within the 6 to um, 6 or 0 to 6 inch. In other words, those are going to be your highest points because those are the widest values. So I can go to my math, the operations, larger than, or let's do smaller than. Right now, yeah, let's do larger than. So I'll take these points, so I'll go to vector to deconstruct them. And again, we're interested in where their z value is. So where are they on that z axis? I'll drag them to the A. This basically, if it's uh, greater than 6, so that's going to be anywhere between uh, 6.0001 and 12. That creates my true and false pattern, which I use the dispatch for. So I'm looking at the point, so that's why that's going into my list. Then I'm looking at the pattern, which is greater than 6. It's again showing both those that are greater than and those that aren't. Let's preview that. Oops. And let's look at what those points are. So maybe these, huh. I'm pretty sure some of those were way above, right? Nope. So 5B, huh. Oh, that's right, so. Oh, that's right, cause for whatever reason, I accidentally grabbed the smaller one. So math larger than, let's get rid of that one, oops, so there we go, so there's all our points that are greater than six feet or are within that six inch or less range, you can see how they're all kind of hovering near those white peaks in this height field. And if they're not, they're less than, you can do it that way. I mean, this is going to show all that information. So in reality, you're probably going to want to take that list, do again uh, something that's larger than. Let's start off with like, I don't know what that threshold is going to be, but let's try 0.25 just to get rid of all that really black um, area that have all those points. Oops, I have to deconstruct that again. So, you know, deconstruct those points to find there. Uh, Z axis. So that gets pretty close. It doesn't, I might have to go a little bit higher than 0.25 to filter it out a little bit more. That looks better. Okay. So now we have our points that are basically anywhere above 6 inches to 12 inches of rain, and then those areas that are receiving 6 inches of rain or less. So they're just points right now. We have to actually, again, look at how to visualize that. So 
I'm going to, again, keep it fairly simple and just choose to create circles. But I want the circles to have a radius that is indicative of its actual z value. So I'll do curve, I'll do circle. That's where they're all going to be at. So let's turn that off. Let's turn this one off for now as well. So again, it's creating circles in all those locations, but their size isn't related to where it is on the z-axis, and we want that. So basically, the higher it is, the closer it is to that white, which is zero inches of rain, versus the gray tones, as it gets closer to 50%, that it's receiving around six inches of rain. So let's do that. So we have to remap these values now. So I'm going to take these points, deconstruct them to find those z values, begin to remap. Let's move some of this stuff out of the way. So I'm going to look at all those z values. I'm going to see what the min and the max are. So it's between 6 and 11.7, .7, which is right around where we need it to be. Now we need to remap those values. So we have to cre create our own domain. So if it's near this minimum value of 6, that we, we want that to actually be fairly large. So let's do 0.5. And then, if it's really high, we want them to be small. So in that case, let's do 0.1. So now we have a new value for that radius based off their height. Now if I hide this, you can see like if they're really close to the top, they're small. And then as they get closer, they get towards that 0.5. So again, there's our um, six inches or less rain. Now we can simply just copy and paste this part of the script and replace it with these points. So we'll again deconstruct them. But in this case, we want, again, uh, we look at this value, so our height. So if it's Close to 6, we want that to be at about 0.5 now. So let's just replace that one there. Then if it's really low to the ground, it's close to that 12 inches of rain. So let's make that 0.1. Let's make that just a little bit more to give it some difference. So now you can see how it's really low. Um, they get bigger, and then as they get close to the top, they get smaller. So that's a simple way where you can start to remap those three circles. Um, let's go to our top view, because that's all we really need to know for this. So there's our top view of this. This is where you have to, again, be very good about organizing your file. Let's name this one 2006. And then we have our sublayers. One's going to be six for six inches. The next will be 12 for 12 inches. So let's make sure to. So here's the 12 inch circle range. Let's bake that onto the 12. Hit OK. And then bake this onto the six. Hit OK. And then, so let's turn that off. So you can see we have them actually in Rhino now, right? But again, we need to have some of that context. So the state boundary line. So let's go ahead and import that. So again, I've already touched that up through Illustrator. You guys have done that quite a bit by now. State borders, that's the Illustrator file. So again, once you export those as that SVG from QGIS, you'll have to 
bring them into Illustrator, make them their own files. In this case, we have the state boundary. Wowzers. Any questions? Does that make sense what we're doing? Did I answer you? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is insane. It's about six and a half years old now. Let's just go ahead and pause this. Okay, so I exported these SVG or Illustrator files at the same scale as the map, which was 24 by 36. So this map, I actually resized it by five times. It went from 36 as its length to uh, 180, which is um, a power of five. So I'll just do that as five, hit OK. Now I'll just move that down for whatever reason. It's not perfectly, but you can see there you go. Now it's nice and matched with our state boundaries. Um, so now, which is nice, I mean, you can again filter this out where I probably don't need some of these states in there. Just to clean it up a little. The reason I didn't get rid of them earlier is just so I could make sure that they matched. So there you go. Now, again, once you do that same script for all 10 height fields and put them on their own layers, select them all. I would select them all at the same time. Export them to file. Export selected. Do that. And what's nice, it'll remember all those layers. Easy enough? Okay, so now I'm going to stop this, and now we'll, because I think that 